Is uh, Robert Lucetich there? Sure is. Oh, an old friend of the show, author of Unplayable, an inside account of Tiger's most tumultuous season. He's a journalist, and uh, Robert is back on the program. Great to see you. Why are fans so upset, or at least I feel like they are, here in the United States with this live tour? Well, I I think, uh, DP, that the PGA Tour has done a very good job of turning what is really a commercial battle You've got somebody that's that's just coming after them commercially, and they've turned it into a morality play uh, by saying this money is Saudi money, it's dirty money, it's uh, and and listen, no one is going to be defending the Saudi government uh, and MBS for the things that they've done. But I think the tour has has, has made a PR play, and I think a lot of people are happy the way professional golf is, is run now. They watch it, they consume it. And it would be very similar to, honestly, uh, you know, the uh, a few years ago when the Chinese decided to buy a lot of big soccer players from Europe and, and, and put these teams together in this Chinese league. And they just, they just gave them silly money. And, of course, a lot of these guys went. But they went to an inferior competition. And I think the fans were against that at the time. And in a lot of ways, the fans have been molded to, uh, to, to, to get to a particular outcome. Why is Phil Mickelson the bad guy? Well, look, I mean, Phil, <clears throat> you know, basically he has had a steady supply of foot bullets throughout this entire uh, past, past six months. I think that Phil has always sort of thought himself to be the smartest guy in the room. And he thought he could work everything and make it all. And, and it, by the way, it's, it's worked for a lot of years, right? Let's 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 acknowledge that he's done a great job of uh, of creating a brand. But Phil Mickelson, 51 years old, is no longer, frankly, you know. Obviously, he had an amazing PGA last year and became the oldest ever major champion. So there's something to be said about that. But he's no longer a a force in professional golf. He's 51 years old, and he was given, uh, let's be frank, a boatload of money. And, and depending on who you listen to, I believe it would, I, I do believe it's at least $100 million just to sign. And then you play eight weeks and you get guaranteed money. I mean, the, 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 the real thing about Live is that people need to stop looking at it like it makes economic sense. It makes no economic sense. Done. They're going to just essentially throw a billion dollars against the wall this year. And they don't care because they want to buy a seat at the table. They are positioning themselves, not for this event this week, 48 guys that most of whom you've never heard of or would care to watch, but they're they're looking at the guys that are sitting on the sidelines on the PGA Tour thinking of themselves, I, this, this bottom feeder just made $3 million and I, couldn't, I didn't make the cut last week. And they're going to wait for that steady flow of defections to come from the tour. So I think we're at, uh, we're at a crossroads right now in professional golf. It's not going to look the way it's looked up until now. How will the PGA Tour respond? Well, obviously, there's going to be some uh, disciplinary action. I, I believe it's going to be, whether they make it public or not, I've always thought it was, it was just asinine that they don't. Just make it public. Tell people what, you know, why you're suspending someone like other sports do. But the PGA Tour, they've, <clears throat> they've, they've always hidden behind this idea that our, our, our members are above, uh, you know, they're, they're the best, they're, they're above, they're clean, they're all the rest of it. And I know that's an image thing. But what's interesting from today's press conferences at the Live event in London is that we now know that a number of these players have resigned from the PGA Tour. They've resigned as members of the PGA Tour. So what are you going to do? <clears throat> are you going to suspend a guy that's resigned? I don't think so. So I, I, I believe that uh, the lawyers that uh, Greg Norman and his backers have uh, have employed. And let's not forget, by the way, Ari Fleischer was running that press no. conference today. Okay. <laughs> Ari Fleischer. I mean, my goodness. So. <laughs> uh, Robert, let's fast forward 10 years from now. Where are both sides? Um, look, it really just depends on how big the investment is going to be. I believe that the Saudis think that they're in this for the long haul and that they will ultimately 
control the global golf tour. And the PGA Tour will become a, a secondary tour. And that's the battle we're in right now. And I'm not sure that they're going to lose because, uh, DP, as you and I both know, money talks. And it talks very loudly with professional golfers. Well, it didn't talk loud enough for Tiger. Didn't talk loud enough for Jack Nicholas. I'm wondering, does everybody have a price tag? You know, Rory, Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth. Does everybody have a price tag at, you know, when you're in your 20s, early 30s? Well, okay, when you're in your 20s, that's a different conversation to have. If you're winning majors, you, you're, you're about your legacy as a golfer. When you are in your 40s and you've won a few majors and you know that you're on the back nine of your career and somebody just floats 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars guaranteed, a lot of these guys are going to take it. The Sergio Garcias, the Lee Westwoods. I mean, they, look, look at what they all have in common. You know, I think DJ at 37 is, 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 is the youngest of the, of, the, of the big names. But a Taylor Gooch surprised me because he's a young guy making his way on the tour, pretty successful, one on the PJ Tour, and he took the money. So ultimately, the other interesting aspect of this is that Norman is going after young players out of college. And this has never really been done. The PGA Tour makes them go through the hoops to get onto the PGA Tour. But from what I, I was told, uh, one of the young amateurs was given $6 million to sign and then guaranteed $250,000 for every event that he played. And th th those numbers, you add those numbers up, and that is a, you know, an excellent year on the PGA Tour. Excellent year for you know, somebody that may not, potentially even get on the PJ tour. So he's snapping them up. And again, it all goes back to the fact that it's silly money. There is, you know, people are always trying to make sense of this. Well, it's not going to last. Okay. If somebody says to you, you got $2 billion and you must spend it, what are you going to do? You're going to go spend it. Right? So that's what we're seeing right now. And I do believe this will be the weakest of field of any live event, because I, I think that other players are looking around and saying, well, if the tour is not going to really do anything, if I'm still going to be able to play majors. That's very, very important for obviously the younger guys and their legacy. Um, yeah, so they won't get a guy like Rory because Rory's got, you know, two or 300 million in the bank. Um, he doesn't really need, another 100 million isn't going to make his life different and he doesn't want to do it. So you will always have, I think, guys that won't do it but it will be interesting to see what the majors do. If the next week it's the U.S. Open, we have not heard anything from the USGA about banning any of these guys, and I don't believe we will. I believe that they're going to play because there's about 12 of them in the field. So, you know, do you think the Masters is going to say to a Phil Mickelson, to a Dustin Johnson, potentially uh, to a Sergio Garcia, hey, uh, past champ, uh, no, you're not going to play in this year's Masters. I don't see that happening. So... Qualification for the Masters is going to be an issue. But again, I think that we're going to end up in court at probably, probably soon. And, and a lot of these questions will be, uh, will be uh, answered by courts. Robert, great to talk to you again. Thanks for your insight. You got it, Matt. Robert Lucetich, the uh, author of Unplayable, an inside account of Tiger's most tumultuous season.